This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you guys, and we're still on vacation here in beautiful Maui, Hawaii. It was raining earlier, but I'm so glad the sun's out. And you know, I'm not at the beach today. I'm actually at a farm, and you're like, John, that's a farm? Doesn't look like a farm. Well, yeah, there's a farm behind the house where they're growing a really valuable uh, crop that you guys could grow pretty much anywheres and they're doing it differently than how most people grow this crop. And this crop is simply grass. No, it's not that kind of grass. It's actually wheat grass. No, it's not the lawn either. Uh, it's wheat grass grown in the soil, which is unlike most wheat grass grown. You know, I saw this uh, couple at the farmer's market. It's a family owned business uh, today. And I got some of this wheat grass here. It's Al and Joni's grass shack. It has a picture of their house, and that's the grass shack behind me. No, well, I wish this was the love shack. Hey, the love shack is a little old place where. Eh? This is the grass shack, Maui grown wheat grass, and it's grown outdoors in really rich soil. And check it out. This is some of the best tasting wheat grass I've tasted in my life, you know. It's right up there, like one of the top three. It might even be the top one. It's been so long since I've had wheatgrass because, you know, literally drinking wheatgrass is like when you mow your grass, that's what it smells like. And a lot of times when you drink wheatgrass, it almost wants you to make you throw up or barf or something like that. But this wheatgrass totally does not do that to me. And that's because they're doing some special practices that literally I've seen no other place do in the whole world, you know, and I believe this to be one of the best tasting wheatgrasses in the world and wheatgrass is very nutritious basically chlorophyll rich grass i mean check it out you know grass is what sustained cows to get them to be 2000 pounds it's rich in chlorophyll rich in vitamins and it absorbs you know the majority of the minerals that are in the ground unlike other crops because it is a grass crop and it has a lot of protein in there as well. And there's so many reasons why wheatgrass is so good. You know, what I wanna do next, I actually share with you guys how exactly they grow it here, which makes them different, and how you guys could be able to grow some of this stuff at home. And so anyways, I guess uh, next, let's go ahead and head around the back of the house and show you where they grow their special wheatgrass. So now we're around the back of the house and we're gonna share with you guys their grow operation here now i've been to other wheatgrass growing facilities i mean i've been to like uh down in south florida uh they grow wheatgrass inside a commercial warehouse building you know in south florida even in the middle of the heat i've been to places like in portland oregon that you guys saw recently where actually they're growing wheatgrass inside the garage and i know many friends and people i've visited before grow wheatgrass inside their home i've also been to Hippocrates Health Institute that promotes the use of wheatgrass for healing people from various diseases. You know, and they grow inside a basically a greenhouse. But, you know, all those methods, they grow wheatgrass in little trays with a little bit of soil and the roots, you know, and, oh, and some people even grow wheatgrass hydroponically without any soil and, you know, all the roots wrap around and go somewhere and basically what happens in that wheatgrass, right? All the nutrients in the wheatgrass, for the most part, come from the seed itself. There's nutrients stored in the seed. I mean, that's the purpose of seeds, so that the plant could reproduce and there has to be enough nutrition in there for the plant to have everything it needs to get growing. The problem is when the nutrients run out, you know, that's a limiting factor on how nutritious the wheatgrass will be. So what they're doing here in beautiful Maui in the rich volcanic soil is they're growing wheatgrass basically in the ground. You know, they've basically made a little um, greenhouse with open air sides to get good air circulation. That's really important. And they're getting a shade cloth on the top, 30% shade cloth to keep it a little bit cooler inside there but still get plenty light and uh, they're growing the wheatgrass in the soil now if they're just growing wheatgrass in the soil I probably wouldn't even be here filming this video for you guys because yeah people grow wheatgrass in the soil all the time but see they got some special soil practices really making this soil super rich I mean this is if I grew wheatgrass basically I'd be growing it like they're growing it I mean it's probably some of the best it's the best wheatgrass I've tasted for the most part 
and they're growing some of the best stuff. So it's their soil practices and their gardening practices that make this stuff really good along with you know, selecting the highest quality seed. Now many of you guys may have heard of wheatgrass before and many of you guys may not have heard of wheatgrass. So I want to take a minute to share with you guys what is wheatgrass and some of the benefits. And uh, for that, you know, there's a little print out that you could print out online. You could search this online if you want to see why I believe everybody watching this video should be using wheatgrass on a regular basis in their lives. And this is simply called 50 Reason to drink wheatgrass every day and if you want to find the whole article because I'm not gonna be able to go over all 50 reasons why you should be drinking wheatgrass because I gotta you know I gotta show them show you guys how they're growing it here you can check out the chalkboardmag.com and go to that website and just search for wheatgrass and you'll be sure to find this little article that I have printed out here and basically it says wheatgrass is intense and here's a list of 50 reasons i mean if you go into whole foods jamba juice they sell these wheatgrass shots like one ounce it's like you know i don't advocate drinking shots of alcohol but i advocate drinking shots of wheatgrass because it is so powerful much like a little shot of alcohol will you know get you buzzing or whatever it does i haven't drank in so many years now but the wheatgrass you know you'll feel it just one little shot because it is so potent i mean it's concentrated sun energy for lack of a better word and there's they give you 50 reasons why you should be drinking this stuff and it says wheatgrass is one of the best sources of living chlorophyll available today and it says to get the benefits of the chlorophyll it must come from a living plant so you know for the most part I focus on plants other than wheatgrass to get my chlorophyll my kale all my leafy greens I mean my channel is called growing your greens I don't care what kind of greens that you consume on a regular basis to get your chlorophyll you know but you want to be consuming plants with chlorophyll because that's where life on earth starts from the plants converting the sun energy into chlorophyll and creating all the other vitamins and minerals within it and it says wheatgrass contains up to 70 percent chlorophyll this is a very powerful chlorophyll rich plant i mean we could go on here and you know say all kinds of things chlorophyll contains enzymes and super oxide dismutase which is actually a really strong powerful antioxidant and science has proven chlorophyll arrest growth and development of unfriendly bacteria chlorophyll is antibacterial can be used in and outside the body you know I mean all kinds of reasons that are why the wheatgrass is so good specifically the chlorophyll chlorophyll neutralizes toxins chlorophyll helps purify the liver I mean this is all mentioned here in this article chlorophyll improves blood sugar problems diabetes is a huge problem it says this could help that I mean antiseptic benefits concentrated sun power it says right here man number 19 wheatgrass juice can dissolve the scars that are formed in the lungs from breathing acid gases man insane gargle with wheatgrass for a sore throat wheatgrass helps your hair from graying so hey if you want to keep your hair not graying drink some wheatgrass wheatgrass juice helps digestion makes your skin you know excellent like uh you know it's a skin cleanser it says wheatgrass juice improves arthritis i mean i could go on and on all these reasons i mean one of the cool things in here like number 49 is really interesting all the gardeners out there will want to listen to this one number 49 dr erp thomas said wheat is the king of all grain foods he found that an ounce of wheatgrass in a gallon of fluorinated water will turn the fluorine into harmless calcium phosphate fluoride compound so if you don't want the fluoride in the water and they're fluorinating in your city hey you might want to add small amounts of wheatgrass to your water and then water your plants with it you know it says here that it's going to get rid of the fluoride and I guess we'll go to number 50. Finally, by taking wheatgrass juice, one may feel an increase in strength and endurance, renewed health and spirituality, and experience an overall sense of well-being. I mean, literally, I believe, like Hippocrates said, food, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And wheatgrass is probably one of my top 10, you know, medicines that literally is a food. And we should be consuming this on a regular basis because this it's fact the matter is clear standard American person is not consuming enough leafy greens or chlorophyll rich foods they are having all these non green foods white foods you know white foods in my opinion are the bane of modern-day society and green foods you know in my opinion are the healer that and I want 
everybody out there watching this video to get some green foods in you and wheatgrass, one of the most powerful ways to do it in the most concentrated form so you don't even have to have as much. One of the things I've heard is that just one small shot of wheatgrass is like eating a couple pounds of vegetables. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that wheatgrass is very potent and especially the wheatgrass they grow here, it's probably the super most potent healthy stuff that you could find. So anyways, let's go ahead and head down to the shade house there and share with you guys their process of growing some of the best wheatgrass on earth. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go in to the shade house. Now, you know, there's important reasons for many of the different practices that they're using here. And I would encourage you guys to have practices in your garden, you know, because one of the things I like to say is that you will learn as you grow. They've been growing wheatgrass for over 10 years here and they've learned a little bit along the way and they've always changed what they're doing to improve their systems. I mean, they got this all systematized on how they're growing uh, the wheatgrass here and they've always been constantly improving. So one of the things they did to improve growing the wheatgrass is basically build a structure here uh, that's shaded out, but not only shaded, but also uh, has a roof on it because you know one of the main factors with growing wheatgrass wherever you are is the mold and you will get mold you will you could lose your crop if you have too much moisture or you know have problems with your crop with not enough moisture as we'll learn in a little bit and also something very important is the airflow so they didn't just enclose this whole structure basically they left the top half open air so that air could circulate in addition if you guys look down the way you know every 10 feet they have big fans that come on to help circulate and push air so that there's no stagnant airflow this will discourage the mold from growing so i mean that's just two of the practices they have here i mean there's so many else other practices that they have uh, inside so actually without further ado let's go ahead and go inside this uh, shade house to show you guys how they're growing some of the best wheatgrass that I've tasted. So now we're inside the shade house and it's a lot cooler out here and if it starts to rain like we get constant rain showers here in Maui if it starts to rain I'm undercover now <laughs> so it's really cool but the other thing cool is that they're growing their wheatgrass undercover what you're looking at is just you know a small portion of maybe even a quarter of uh, this shade house where they're growing wheatgrass. I mean, each of these little areas or beds that they have is about three feet by six feet. And, you know, one area will produce approximately $160 in retail value of product. So, I mean, I don't know what other agricultural or vegetable you could grow in three feet by six feet, you know, to, to basically uh, yield out $180. That's a lot. I want to encourage gardeners out there that like growing. Hey, get growing some wheatgrass and supply your local community doing a similar system like this or just growing it for yourself because wheatgrass, I mean, the stuff's expensive, man, but you could easily grow it. I know a lot of you guys might not want to grow it. So, hey, you could get some of this stuff. But, uh, you know, I always encourage you guys to grow your own food because it's always going to be better fresh you know freshest is best is fresh harvested stuff far better than stuff that's been you know shipped across the country or whatnot and uh, what you're looking at here is how they're growing it literally in the dirt but they're just not using the dirt that was here pre-existing they've been amending this soil and adding things to it adding some of the best nutrients that you could add to your garden into the soil to grow some of the highest quality wheatgrass and i think that's why i truly like this wheatgrass a lot because there's nutrients that the wheatgrass is pulling up out of the soil, you know, to give the flavor profile to make it, you know, not as nauseating as normal wheatgrass is. And uh, what you're seeing here is the areas that don't have the boxes on top of them. Uh, these are areas that have been previously cut. So basically, this is kind of like they're doing their little crop rotation, although crop rotation is they simply just grow wheatgrass in this whole area. But their crop rotation is simply this. Basically, they start with land, or an area, a bed that doesn't have anything growing in it. They plant the seeds, which I'll show you guys in a minute. They let the seeds grow out approximately 10 days from the time they plant the seeds to the time they're actually cutting the wheatgrass. Then after they cut the wheatgrass, they cut it, they take the box off the top, they let the wheatgrass grow out into a second cutting, which they do not actually sell. They take that second cutting because it's far less nutritious than the first although you could use it for edible purposes they take the second cutting and then feed their chickens with it so they got some really well-fed chickens 
once they take off the second cutting then they basically let the let it dry out and kind of like uh, you know let the roots under the ground you know dry out and let the bacteria in there you know basically compost them down they then clear off the top dried up grass use it as a mulch on other areas of their farm including in their fruit orchard and vegetable garden and then basically they take a tiller they till up the uh, area and then they also then re-enrich with some soil nutrients that we're going to go ahead and show you guys in a minute so uh, that's kind of the process let me go ahead and show you guys several steps of the process specifically to show you guys what they're doing here. So what we're looking at now is a bed that they actually uh, tilled up and added amendments to. And you know, you guys know that I'm not a big fan of using a rotor tillers to till, but I think, you know, in every specific situation, there may be a need for rotor tilling. I'm not in a big fan of it because I believe it destroys the soil ecology and microbes. But in this situation, it may be a good thing, you know, because they till the soil, it gets to be a nice, really, you know almost sandy like consistency so this is some of the finest darkest soil you know that i've ever seen and the cool thing is i mean i'm just digging down i can stick my hand down you know basically like wow i'm down like about a foot now with my hand in the soil i wish my hand was in something else but um my hands in the soil i mean this is really you know light fluffy texture and when there's so many air pockets and space for the roots to grow that eat the roots can easily go down through the soil you know down to a nice depth and it said that their wheat grass grown in soil the roots could reach in excess of 12 inches down you know in just the 10 days i mean the whole reason for the root system is for the roots to absorb nutrients from the soil and when your soil is a uh, light and airy like this the roots can easily penetrate down and in addition they're adding things to the soil that is not normally used in standard agriculture practices whether you own a farm whether you're growing at home i definitely would recommend you guys use some of the products that they're using to make this some of the best soil that i've seen so anyways let's go ahead and share with you guys the the few different soil additives and they don't use many that they're putting in their farm here to ensure they're going to grow the highest quality wheatgrass that frankly other growers i visited simply just don't use so now i'm going to show you guys the nutrients they use to add nutrition to their soil that i believe all agriculture and home gardeners should be using especially if you have a farm to increase the quality of the produce because you know they're really into having the highest quality wheatgrass and according to the taste and how i felt afterwards i mean it, it gave me like little energy buzz and it just tasted so sweet and and good without like that gag reflex i normally get with wheatgrass and normally i don't really like wheatgrass actually uh, so they use a few different things basically three primary ingredients although they add a few other things as well to balance out their soil like gypsum uh, because their soil here needs the gypsum to be able to you know uh, grow things properly and i only recommend adding gypsum if it's needed these ones these items i recommend adding whenever uh, you can you know i always believe these will be beneficial for your garden and you know i grow organically and recommend organic growing that's the practices they use here they use organic growing practices and uh, these are all natural ingredients from the earth they're not man-made not any chemicals you know not made in a factory or anything like this uh, the first thing is the verma compost the verma compost is simply worm castings plus the bedding they're living in now they're pretty anal here about some of the practices they do they actually screen out the verma compost and they separate out the castings from all the you know the bedding material and they only use the castings in their raised beds they don't want to mess around with the stupid bedding material that goes to their garden but to grow the highest quality wheatgrass they're only using the castings so it's the down to earth brand of the verma compost i personally like the uh worm gold plus which is my favorite worm casting and i find that to be the best i have a video on that so check that past episode but yes the worm castings the main benefit of the worm castings are the micro microbial activity in there this casting is actually from canada and it's a very high quality casting uh fed some grain and other nutrients uh, in a controlled space and uh, basically the worm castings are full of the beneficial microbes and this provides you know the one of the missing nutrients in today's standard agriculture that's really required 
because people don't understand how the soil works. I mean, in a teaspoon of soil, there's more living things in there than people on earth, you know, believe it or not. It, it's so many living creatures and standard agriculture wants to wipe these out. And in my opinion, organic agriculture should be cultivating and encouraging the bacteria and the microbes because it's these bacteria, microbes, and fungi in the soil that actually break down the other two products to make them bioavailable, you know, for the roots and for the plants. So the next two products, of course, number one is the kelp meal. So kelp is rich in the trace minerals because it is from the ocean. It also has other plant hormones in there that's really good to grow in. I like the kelp meal a lot. And uh, you know, if you can't get kelp meal, get, hey, get fresh seaweed from the ocean. You could collect that, hey, they could do that here. And the other thing they're using, I'm a really super big fan of, be sure to check out the videos on this, it's the uh, granular azomite uh, from down to earth. So this adds the, you know, uh, A to Z, that's azomite, A to Z of minerals back into soil. Now I know many of you guys have never heard of this before, but I strongly encourage you guys, even if you don't believe in it, to try it. Try one bed using azomite or the rock dust and one bed without it. And you will see a difference in the plant growth and you will taste a difference in many cases on that your plants just taste better and they perform better and they're also healthier in the long run, which is going to minimize, you know, pest problems and disease problems in your garden. And I'm not going to get into the rock dust too much, but just know this standard conventional agriculture adds three minerals back in the soil, NPK, and maybe some people add up to 16 minerals in standard agriculture, you know, the azomites adding 70 minerals, you know, basically what there would be found in nature in an ideal situation. And I'm not, I'm about growing in an ideal situation because I want to grow the highest quality food. And you know, by seeing that they're using these products here, that lets me know that they're growing some of the highest quality chit, if you know what I mean. Anyways, let's take a look at another practice they're doing to enable them to grow some of the highest quality wheatgrass that I've seen. So another thing they're doing here that I encourage you guys as home gardeners to do as well is behind the iron curtain or in this case, green towel. All right, let's go ahead and show it. Whoa, check it out. All right, so they got a, basically a water filtration system here, filtering their water, going through a fractal water vortex magnetic system and uh, a woo wee dynamic enhanced um, coherent balancer to basically, basically make a more alive water. So, you know, they're filtering their water and they got probably some of the most active water. I will soon be, if not already, installing uh, some kind of magnet water uh, conditioner for my personal garden, which I have heard that you could get yield increases up to 10%. So, hey, any yield increase or any possible advantage you could have in your garden, I believe is a good thing. Although, you know, many people might not believe in this. Here's the thing. I don't believe this technology could hurt your production. I believe at worst, you're gonna waste, you know, however much the, the technology costs you, but at best, you're gonna increase your yield and have higher quality food. And I'm all about higher quality food. And yeah, if I waste, a, you know, some money and it doesn't really work, but even if it gives me like one or 2% better production, it makes my plants healthier so that they resist bacteria, fungal or mold or pests and diseases. That's worth it to me because now that means I do less labor and have to spray less neem oil or whatever here. So uh, that's really cool that they're using this technology. Next, let's go ahead and go to a newly planted bed with the baby seeds that just got planted to show you guys the process. All right, so here's step one. After they got the bed all prepared like I showed you, they basically put this uh, frame around it. All these frames are movable. And basically what this does, this controls the amount of light because a good gardener will always try to control the climate. And that's what they're doing here. This area has been all prepped and as you guys could see, it's all ready to get planted out inside here. Basically, this is just basically a, a cage made up of some wood and then they got a, a shade cloth on top and they have different ones. They have a green one and then they have a black one. The black one shades out more light and you might be thinking, John, I thought grass needs some light to grow. Well, here's the tip, right? The reason why they're shading this stuff out is because if the plant does not get enough light, it's going to grow taller trying to find the light. If they didn't have any shade cloth on here, the grass would grow, you know, not as tall, more stubby. And they want the grass to reach for the lights and to grow taller. Now, besides having these 
uh, boxes on it this also keeps the birds out because if you plant some wheat seeds down here guess what <laughs> Birds on wheat seeds is like flies on shit. <laughs> they're gonna be all over here and eat all the seeds and then they're not gonna get any production out of it. So they also control the bugs and the pests that could get in here. So this is a very clean operation here. The next thing that you're seeing inside here is uh, basically a proprietary developed watering system that doesn't look too complicated to me. Basically they got some uh, on and off valves on each end and they got some PVC tubing with some sprinklers that point down and there's only three sprinklers. This automates their system. They have like a little timer boxes and valve controls so they can specifically control the amount of water. You know, they told me that if you water too much or too little, then the sugar levels go up in the plant. They wanna keep the sugar levels low in the plant for some of the best tasting wheatgrass because the sugars in the plant, what that is used for really is that the plant should be sending that down into the root zone, right? Why would the plant send sugars down into the root zone? Well, that's because the plant wants to feed the microbes in the root zone. Now, when there's sugar in the root zone and the, basically the plant roots exudate or exude the sugars into the soil, the microbes love it. They go crazy. And then the microbes basically break down other nutrients like the minerals, for example, in the soil and bring that into the plant. So it's a symbiotic relationship between the microbes the minerals and the plant. And so this is why the tray grown wheatgrass is high in sugar and tastes really sweet because you know, they're not feeding microbes in the root zone. And I always want to encourage you guys, you know, to grow your own food. If you can grow wheatgrass and soil, I think that's great. But if you can't, don't say, Oh, John said I can only grow it in solar. It's no good. No, I always want you guys to grow any way you possibly can. If you live in the middle of New York City, growing wheatgrass in a tray is far better than anything you could get at the supermarket because you're growing it yourself, it's fresh cut. And you know, there are other practices you can use to increase the nutrition in wheatgrass, like putting on sea minerals that's more absorbable through the blades of the grass and the root zone at a young age without having the whole beneficial microbe mineral exchange that happens. And this whole exchange does not just happen on the wheatgrass, but it, ex it happens on all other plants as well. And uh, you know, this is something really overlooked and not talked about in organic garden, but this is one of the premises that, you know, that in my belief system about a more biologic organic garden that I subscribe to, and I'm glad they subscribe to it here. And by the looks and by the taste of the wheatgrass, it's obviously working. All right, so here's the next box I wanna show you guys. Let's go ahead and lift the lid off. Um, this box actually is, has a green top to it. And as you guys can see down inside here, they got all the wheat seeds that now are starting to germinate a little bit. Let's see if I could not disturb it too much and pick up a wheat seed here and show you guys. But if you look very closely right at the tip of the wheat seed, the root is just starting to emerge and come out. Soon enough, the root will actually uh, find the ground, go into the ground, the nutritious ground and start to grow and this will start to germinate and turn into the blades of grass you know that they're growing here now one of the cool things they do here is actually they have a sifter so not only do they sift their compost to get the castings only to add to their beds but they also use that sifter to sift the wheat seeds that they get in bulk and you know these are not just any old wheat seeds they've gone through many different varieties of wheat you know, much like there's different varieties of apples, Granny Smith, Gala, and you know, uh, Fuji's and whatnot. And the Fuji's are the sweetest apple. They've gone and found specific wheat seeds that grow the best wheatgrass, and they source these very carefully. And they, you know, over the 10 plus years they've been growing, they get the best quality seed because the best quality seed, guess what, grows the highest quality wheatgrass. And most people might be going down to the local health food store to get the wheat seeds but you're probably not going to get the best wheat seeds that way and uh, they they run the wheat seeds through their sifter to basically take out all the broken shells and all the seeds that are messed up because those ones if they're broken or damaged will not germinate into the grass and may cause problems such as mold growing uh, when they're growing it and those ones <laughs> get fed to the chickens nothing is wasted here and nothing in nature is ever wasted think about that one you know i mean humans we have plastic and styrofoam that never degrade in the in, in the landfill but all organic matter will 
you know, eventually get return to land, and that's what they, they do here. Every different component that they use is always return to the land, and I like that a lot. All right, so now they've gone from the green top to the black top, and basically all they're doing every day is just watering the appropriate amount. You know, plants need very little care. They need some water. You know, they already got good soil nutrition, and stuff grows. I mean, nature knows what to do. You get into bed with a girl, oh, hopefully, if you're a uh, heterosexual then you know what to do right <laughs> so check it out you know just after a few days what happens is the plants grow and we could see just the little blades of grass and they look oh so cute with the little water droplets on top of them and they're growing and uh you know just after about nine to ten days this stuff's ready to be harvested so let's see if we got another one you know almost ready to get harvested and maybe I'll even i'll get to harvest some fresh wheatgrass today. So now let's go ahead and see some ready to be harvested wheatgrass here in this bed. We're gonna go ahead and pull the top off and check it out, this beautiful wheatgrass growing. Now it's very important to harvest your wheatgrass before the jointing stage when they basically split from one blade into two. This is when the nutrition is the highest. And uh, you know, to harvest this stuff, it's good old fashioned manual labor. This is basically a, a family business here. And it's a husband and wife team that grows the wheatgrass and you know they sell the farmers market and, and do everything you know it's really cool you know and i want to encourage you guys to to have your own business you know i'm not a big fan of working for the man you know corporations or other companies i believe everybody in america should have their own business i mean it'd be a great business in my belief to grow wheatgrass and provide a service for other people because in my opinion all businesses are are they providing a service that people don't want to do you know maybe you guys don't want to grow wheatgrass out there so you can buy the wheatgrass from this farm if you do want to grow wheatgrass for yourself great then you don't have to buy the wheatgrass from this farm or better yet maybe you want to start a business and make some money because i mean just in this bed right here this is 180 dollars of retail product of the wheatgrass that they'll be harvesting and selling i mean that's a lot of money in a three foot by six foot piece of earth and yeah, super simple, super easy. You just need to start creating a market and doing all this kind of stuff and selling the wheatgrass to people. And a big part of this is all education because a standard American does not have any clue what wheatgrass is, even though it's so beneficial to health, in my opinion. Anyways, harvesting is with the standard, actually a really nice uh, <laughs> knife here. It's a Wustoff. And actually this stuff is quite sharp. They sharpen it regularly and man, this stuff, super crazy. So let's go ahead and go down here and cut off. Wow, oh my gosh, I barely even rubbed this against the blades and it totally just came off, man. So once they got these uh, wheatgrass harvested, what they're then gonna do is take it up and then package it special so it can last up to two weeks. You know, most wheatgrass can last only a few days after it's been harvested. And I always encourage you guys to get buy your wheatgrass in trays still living whenever possible. Uh, due to laws here in Hawaii, they can't ship off live wheatgrass, so that's why they harvest it. And uh, then at that point, they can ship it off island to you know you guys out there in the mainland. So anyways, uh, next we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys how they pack this stuff up, and then probably we're gonna, probably gonna juice it. But before we do, actually, I want to show you guys the, the next few steps in the process of after they harvest the grass, what they do with the beds to basically, uh, you know, turn it over to re-enrich it and to, uh, you know, get it growing again until they repeat this same cycle, you know, planting out new seeds and all this kind of stuff again. So what we're looking at now is the fresh cut wheatgrass. They basically harvested this for the farmer's market. That was earlier today. They took the knife and they cut it off. And this is very important to cut your wheatgrass at the proper level. They cut it high enough as to not get any of the seeds in with the wheatgrass. It's very important if you do get seeds with the wheatgrass, the wheatgrass may contain gluten, you know, because that's where all the gluten is contained. But once the seed sprouts into a bladed grass, it's my understanding that there's no longer gluten in there. So they chop this nice and high to get all the nutrition in the blades without the gluten. And then now it basically just sits like this and they let it continue to grow. And let's go ahead and show you another area where it's grown for just a little bit and how it looks and uh, talk about more about the process of how they basically let this area pull up more nutrients and then they basically compost this back down to uh, enrich other areas of the farm. All right, now I'm 
playing in the grass. All right, so here's an area that they already previously cut and then it basically uh, have a second growth. So one of the questions I get often is, John, can you grow the wheatgrass, do the first cutting, let it regrow, and can you keep cutting it and cutting it and keep juicing the stuff you get? Well, the answer is yes, you can absolutely do that, but I always encourage you guys to only eat the first cutting. I mean, it's the best stuff. I mean, if you want to, you can do the second cutting, but it's not as nutritious as the first, although second cutting wheatgrass is better than a hamburger, a cheeseburger, you know, cookies, soda, donuts, I mean a lot of things people would normally eat, but I only want to bet, I want the best and I want to put the best in my body and that's what they do here. You know, they don't sell second cutting stuff. They sell only first cutting stuff, but what they do is after we got the second growth, which is still good grass, I mean think about it, when you mow your lawn, it's always second, third, fourth, fifth, I don't know, some of you guys might be on your hundredth cuttings of your lawn. <laughs> and it'll continue to grow and grass will continue to grow. Uh, but what they do here is they just take, once again, the knife and they just cut off the second growth and then this stuff they actually feed to the chickens so hey let's go ahead and feed the chickens with some of this second cutting <laughs> little chickens little chickens all right so we got the second cutting wheatgrass we're gonna go ahead and feed the chickens and check it out they're going for it man they know that stuff some of the best food in this whole farm right for it eating the second clippings of wheatgrass you know so whether you want to juice yourself or feed it to your chickens i mean the other thing i want to talk about is animals right animals oh my gosh we got the herd running towards me man because they see there's some food down here but you know i always want to encourage you guys to treat your animals well whether you're your your chickens your dogs your cats you know wheatgrass i believe can benefit all animals on the earth and an excellent way if they're not chickens to get this into them is to actually give them the wheatgrass juice too you know i've had several friends that feed their you know dogs wheatgrass after the dog got cancer and it helped with you know the dog heal you know the cancer so you know i don't know what's going to happen in your situation but if it can do this for my friends animals that have cancer think about what it may be able to do for you as well so after the second cutting what they do is they let the ground go fallow or basically let the plant dry out and be no longer productive this way it's feeding the beneficial microbes in the soil the soil the microbes in the soil are able to basically break down some of the root matter and absorb that back into the soil to make the soil more nutritious than it was previously. And they basically just scrape off all this top matter, which at this point, look at that, wow, that scrapes off really easy. And all this top matter is used as mulch, you know, in their garden and around their trees. And check out, I mean, one of the cool things is this soil is nice and fluffy and there's, you know, the root matter is totally breaking down. The next step after this, of course, is they're gonna go ahead and then now screen this soil once again because they want nice airy soil with no foreign particulate in there because this may cause you know challenges with mold and whatnot so they're very methodical in all their growing practices and i would encourage you guys as home gardeners to also be methodical you know because if, if you have you know a method to the madness it's always going to work better in my opinion than just kind of leaving everything up to chance I guess the next thing I want to do is I actually want to go inside and show you guys how they pack their wheatgrass so it can stay fresh for up to 14 days, which is amazing. All right, so now we got our wheatgrass and they made these special little trays to harvest them in. Then they come into the packing room, which we're in right now, and they pack this guy up. Now, one of the reasons why this wheatgrass lasts so long is because they just don't use your standard Ziploc bags or any kind of old plastic bags that many pe people may put their produce in, what they use are some specially designed bags that were originally designed for shipping broccoli because if you put broccoli in plastic bags, it like rots very fast, but this technology allows literally the broccoli or whatever food in there to breathe so it, all the bad gases can escape so the wheatgrass doesn't rot and can stay fresh for up to 14 days. And they got this stuff right here. These are just simply, I mean, they look like plastic bags, but these are specially designed bags. They're called cryo vac bags and uh what they've done here they got the specially uh, sized bag they then you know weigh out the wheatgrass half a pound in each bag they basically uh, put this around the bag probably better if i use two hands for this because we want the wheatgrass to go all the way in the bag so that we can you know then seal it properly so i'm putting it all the way down you know shaking it down making sure it goes to the bottom and we don't want any stray blades of grass because that's going to mess up the Ziploc because I got to do this right the first time or my mom's going to get mad at me. 
<laughs> so then once we got all the wheatgrass, we're gonna kind of make it even out. And man, this stuff looks real pretty. Look at that, I've done a good job. So now we're gonna go ahead and seal the wheatgrass. And to do that, they're not using the food saver to suck out the air because the food saver will not work with this thin style bag. They just basically take a good old fashioned glass cutting board and they basically press out all the air and get it uh, nice and compressed and then they just use the food saver simply uh, for the sealing aspect to basically uh, melt the plastics that it protects the wheatgrass inside. All right, now that the seal light's off, we can get, then uh, pull this up. And last thing you gotta do is just uh, take one of these labels here and uh, slap it on the bag. <laughs> and I'm uh, now certified as a wheatgrass packer. I guess I got a second job if I want it. All right, so uh, you know now this wheatgrass is either sold in stores, sold at farmers markets, or actually shipped to you know the mainland or here in the islands. And what most people do with this wheatgrass is actually juice it. Now I do recommend juicing wheatgrass, not blending it. While you can blend it with water to extract some of the delicious chlorophyll and nutrition out of it, you know, that's very hard on the wheatgrass. The blender runs at high RPMs. It tends to oxygenate the food more. I mean, better than blending it with water than straining it through a cheesecloth or nut milk bag, in my opinion, would be just to take the wheatgrass if you don't have a juicer, can't afford a juicer, is to just take it, put it in your mouth, then chew it up like a cow chews its cud. And you're gonna basically extract all the juice out of it swallow the juice and then spit out all the fiber. You know, they do offer juicers and if you need to get a juicer, they can offer you a hand crank juicer for a really affordable price, you know, when you buy your wheatgrass from them. And the juicer will literally last, you know, a lifetime with proper care. So what I'm gonna do next, actually I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to juice up this wheatgrass to get some delicious wheatgrass juice. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a taste test on camera for you guys so you can see my reaction. Uh, to some of this best soil grown wheatgrass ever. So now we're gonna go ahead and juice that wheatgrass. We got the uh, little bag of wheatgrass here that I've uh, ripped open and we're gonna juice it. Now, normal people would just take the wheatgrass and just shove it through the wheatgrass juicer haphazardly, but once again, you know, I'm very systematized and you know, there's a, there's a method to my madness. And so the proper way to juice wheatgrass is to basically take it out of the package and then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna dunk it in the water. And uh, this helps to rehydrate it, also makes it juice better. Some people also like to put, you know, a few drops of oil into the water, like, uh, you know, coconut oil or whatnot, that'll help actually lubricate the juicer and help reduce the foam. The main reason why I'm putting it in the water is to help reduce the foam that's generated because the foam being generated uh, is some oxidation and we wanna try to minimize that at all costs. We're now gonna go ahead and turn this machine on. But before I do, I wanna talk about, you know, not every juicer will juice wheatgrass. You need a specific style of machine to juice the wheatgrass. Like if you go to your local big box store and buy a juicer off the shelf, that's not gonna effectively juice wheatgrass. You need a slow, single RPM juicer, and I recommend the single auger style juicers. You can check out my website, uh, discountjuicers.com, for specific wheatgrass juicers that will juice wheatgrass such as this one, this is the Lexin electric juicer, and you can also get a multi-purpose juicer such as the Omega NC800 or Omega8006 that'll juice wheatgrass as well as other herbs and uh, vegetables as well as fruits. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this guy on and we're gonna go ahead and take out the wheatgrass out of the water. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this uh, blade side down right into the machine you know, a little bit at a time. You don't wanna like jam down a ton of wheatgrass into the machine, and look at that. The machine literally sucks it in, and it's spitting out and chewing up all the grass, and we're getting some of the delicious juice out. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take some more of this wheatgrass and, uh, and juice it on up, and we're gonna see how much juice, literally eight ounces of wheatgrass will yield. All right, so I got my last bit of wheatgrass here going into the water there. We're gonna go ahead and soak that guy. We're gonna go ahead and take out the last bit and juice it on up. Now, I mean, mainly what the juicer is doing, it's separating the juice from the fiber. And Jay Cordich, formerly known as the Juice Man, says it's the juice of the fiber that feeds you. I mean, you could sit there and chew this all day, but I don't got all the time to chew up and juice with my teeth eight ounces of wheatgrass 
But what I am, what I do have time for is let the juicer do the juicing for me and extract all the nutrients out of it. You know, it's said that juice is one of the most easiest things to digest in the entire world that you could be putting into your body. Because you know, when our body does not have to deal with the fiber, it takes an incredible load of energy off of our body so that we can direct that energy to do other things in life. Like, hey, nice bedroom activities. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we're doing here is, as you guys can see, we're getting the juice out and we're getting a lot of juice. This actually juicer is very efficient at juicing wheatgrass. And we're getting all the pulp here. I mean, this pulp is super dry. I mean, some juicers that don't make really dry pulp, you can put the pulp back through the juicer a little bit at a time because this stuff's very hard. It may damage some juicers to get a little bit more juice out, but this pulp's super dry. Now, you know, normally people compost this pulp, but I would encourage you guys to do what's called a wheatgrass poultice. So say you got cut. Actually, I got cut the other day. You can actually just put this on a cut if you have like, you know, any kind of like skin irritations, put that on, put some tape on it to hold it, you know, uh, to your skin there. And, you know, I know people that have done this and it helps them heal faster. So yeah, I mean, the power of wheatgrass is simply amazing. I guess next, let's go ahead and check out how much wheatgrass we produced. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull off this uh, wheatgrass here. And it's always important, you know, to uh, use a little straining screen to strain out any kind of particulate. We're gonna go ahead and remove that and look at that, man. That's like a lot of wheatgrass juice. Looks like it's like up to uh, like 200 milliliters of juice. I'm not mathematical genius. So I don't know how many ounces that is, but it's definitely a lot. We're gonna go ahead and fill up these little shot glasses. And just like my old college days, man, when I was in uh, college, I used to drink alcohol, but actually I quit drinking alcohol while I was in college because I was in actually a fraternity. And I saw the problems that alcohol caused. And, you know, I would ask everybody out there watching this, if you do want to drink alcohol, please drink responsibly, right? Don't drink and drive, please. I mean, we filled up three little shot glasses and we still got more juice. So in general, eight ounces or half a pound of wheatgrass will produce eight ounces of juice with a good juicer and under optimal circumstances. We're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna <laughs> take these wheatgrass shots down. Now, it's very important, not just to like open your throat up and let this go right down, right? For the highest benefit, you wanna swish it around in your mouth and uh, taste it. You know, it's been a long time since I drank this much wheatgrass juice and the last time I did, I actually vomited. <laughs> so if, I could, if I'm able to hold my wheatgrass down, it's definitely gonna be a good thing and a testament to the quality of this wheatgrass. So let's go ahead and uh, hopefully I don't projectile vomit all over the place here. Mmm, wow. This is some of the best tasting wheatgrass. Like, it's not too sugary sweet, but what I'm really tasting is like a really pleasant experience. I mean, what many people don't know is that actually we have, besides sugar receptors on our tongue, salt receptors on our tongue, we have trace mineral detectors on our tongue to sense trace minerals in foods. And this is totally making me excited and lighting me up because it's just so nutritious. I mean. If you don't eat your vegetables, and I recommend everybody out there to get their five to 10 servings of vegetables a day, drink a little bit of wheatgrass juice because a little bit of this stuff goes a long way to you know, uh, compensate for your lack of vegetable intake. That being said, grow your greens and eat them too. And wheatgrass to me, just another green. Mmm. One down, a <laughs> couple more to go. And I want you guys to swish around the wheatgrass in your mouth because digestion starts in your mouth, not in your colon. All right, next glass. Let's go ahead and drink this one a little bit quicker. Mmm. Let me tell you, most wheatgrass that I would taste, I would, I would smell, and it smells like you just cut your lawn. Amazingly, this stuff doesn't really have a strong scent to it, like most wheatgrass I've tasted. And you know, once again, I want to let you guys know that not all wheatgrass is the same. Not all kale is the same. I mean, kale that I buy from the grocery store is nowhere near the quality of the kale that I grow in my yard that I eat. I mean, it doesn't have those bitter overtones. It hasn't, you know, been under the shipping and shipped, you know, a week across country. If you live in New York City and your kale is grown in California, you know, it's super fresh. I mean, they don't pack the kale in the cryovac bags either, so it's aging faster and losing nutrients. 
I mean, this is freshly cut, freshly juiced, and I mean, some of the best wheatgrass juice I've tasted. Mmm. Not making me want to vomit, and that's a good thing. All right, two down. Let's go for the third one. I think tonight I'm not going to eat my vegetables for dinner because I've had definitely enough wheatgrass <laughs> to last a month. Mmm. I mean, normal wheatgrass, I can't just swish around in my mouth like that. It would just be very strong. And man, I, I just not want to drink more with this. It's actually nice and pleasant. Now, yes, I would definitely probably enjoy drinking a nice celery, cucumber, kale juice from my garden. But this is actually really good because wheatgrass can be, you know, <laughs> tastes really bad. And trust me, I've been around a lot of wheatgrass farms, you know, indoor grows normally uh, that are growing in soil or hydroponically, and it just does not taste this good. Mmm. Three down. Let's go ahead and see how many more shot glasses we got. All right, let's see. There's one. All right, about two more. Okay, Lakayam. <laughs> oh, here's a good game to play, right? You guys played quarters with alcohol, play quarters with wheatgrass, and the person that Makes it in, gets to choose who gets to drink the wheatgrass. <laughs> That'd be a funny game. All right, so last wheatgrass shot, five shots going down. This is the most wheatgrass juice I've probably had in like five years, man. I, I couldn't do it if it didn't taste that good, let me tell you. Mmm. Wow, this kind of wheatgrass reminds me of like drinking a fine wine, even though I don't drink. I mean, it really has some subtle flavor overtones and actually tastes much sweeter and better than just anything I've tasted. It just, it's really kind of blowing me away. You know, what, what good quality dirt here in Maui, what good quality soil additives like the worm castings and the rock dust and the kelp, you know, and the proper watering can do to literally turn out the best wheatgrass. Let me go ahead and drink this last half shot. Mm. All right, next part of this episode, real special part, we're gonna get to interview and sit down with Al and Joni, the owners of this family farm where they're growing wheatgrass for the local community, but also, you know, the greater United States. I mean, they've shipped this stuff to Michigan and California and all over. And we're gonna ask them some poignant questions about why they got into growing wheatgrass and why they do some of the techniques they do and some questions that you know you may be wondering after watching this episode and seeing me drink you know literally five shots of wheatgrass and man i'm gonna be up till probably 2 a.m this morning not able to sleep so now we're with al and joni the owners of the farm and actually they do the labor here and grow all this wheatgrass you know and i was wondering why did you guys start growing the wheatgrass here? i mean this is a big operation i mean this probably took a lot of labor and expense to put up this shade house and all the different systems that you've invented and you know i know importing some of the rock dust and the kelp meal and worm castings from you know the mainland can get expensive well that's true but uh you know the wheatgrass uh i found was very important to me and to joni too because we uh read a lot about wheatgrass found how it helped people so much and i was getting to the point where I needed a real boost because my energy levels were low and so forth. So anyhow, we started doing the wheatgrass, but then we had to find out how to grow it because uh, basically I'm an engineer and I don't just do things uh, uh, just so-so. Uh, I want to always investigate and do it the best way possible. And uh, in, we came up with uh, what we felt was the very best way possible, the wheatgrass is the healthiest it can be and the, it tastes the best that it can. And we did that by actually 
uh, growing the wheatgrass in ground, in soil, where the roots can go down as deep as they like, and they typically go down 18 to 20 inches in a short period of time. And so we do that because why? Because the uh, sugars that are in the grass made by the sun, sh sugars of chlorophyll, they're pushed down the uh, ground or down the roots to feed all the microbes in the soil. And uh, so all those sugars, which are, you know, a lot of sugar is not that good for you. If they're going, using, uh, if they're going into the ground and feeding the micro microbes, they're doing something good. Most wheatgrass, probably maybe 95% of it are grown in trays. And in the tray, there's nowhere for the microbes and the sugars to go because there's no microbes. So uh, what happens when you juice the grass, you get all the sugars uh, are in the uh, juice that you've made. And in our case, you have very little sugar. And so very less nice. sugar, it tastes much, much better. And in fact, the better a wheatgrass tastes, the healthier it is for you because it doesn't have all that sugar in it. But, but that's just one of the reasons. The other reason is because uh, we know that in this day and age that you can buy your wheatgrass seed at the local uh, health food store or wherever you buy it. Uh, you can be sure, probably pretty sure, that it doesn't have all the nutrients because soils are depleted and uh, they don't have a lot of the nutrients that you need. Well, in our case, we have extremely uh, very soil that's got all the nutrients and we put a lot of uh, nutrients before we grow it. And so we know whatever is not in the seed, the plant gives a sugar message to the uh, microbes in the soil and tell them, give me this, give me that, and it does. And so the, our wheatgrass has got everything that the plant wants. Yeah, and as so. a result, our wheatgrass is very high in nutrition. Yeah, I mean, I tasted it, it tasted wonderful. I mean, check this out. I mean, the practices they're doing, feeding the microbes, and using the rock dust and the nutrients is the same thing I do. This is the same methodology I use to grow the highest quality vegetables. This is why my garden looks so great. And this is why, you know, the reason why their wheatgrass tastes so good. And I was able to drink five shots of it today and I feel I'm blasted. I'm not a space man with tons of energy. All right. So, so, you know, I've drinking wheatgrass here and there, but I've done a lot of green juices, which is rich in chlorophyll, and I know that's helped me immensely become healthier. But how has wheatgrass specifically helped you guys, you know, uh, become healthier or wh whatever it does for you? Well, one thing that wheatgrass does is it raises your pH, and it's known that if you have um, a higher pH, you hold more oxygen. It also is very high in nutrition, so it has all the vitamins and minerals, and and by do doing that the body can function better and it can um, there's actually been research done by Dr. Tennant where he um, there's a correlation between pH and uh, voltage in the body the higher the pH the higher the voltage in the body so the more energy you have the closer you get to 7 pH the more the higher the the voltage and you need to get minus 50 millivolts to make new cells mm. and so as a result that's um that's one of the reasons why we did the wheatgrass was that you know we're getting older and we wanted to feel strong and healthy and we do al do you mind me telling him honey sure. hey, he's 82 <laughs> and i'm <laughs> so, wow so yeah so we're really you know we're very healthy and very strong and so as a result it's it's nice yeah, I mean, it's garbage in, garbage out. Most Americans eat literally garbage. You know, junk food is garbage in my opinion. And you want to be putting, putting some of the best foods in the wheatgrass. I mean, literally, it's concentrated sun energy. Now, I know a lot of my viewers out there are over 40. And, you know, uh, one of the things that you said that the wheatgrass improves oxygen flow. And that's one of the reasons why people take Viagra of all things. So I got to ask you, <laughs> did it improve your guys' sex life? And you could just say yes or no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, guys. So, man, if you're over 40, you guys got to get some of this wheatgrass stuff because it's going to improve your sex life, probably. All right. So. <laughs>
<laughs> so I want to know next. No, this is unscripted. <laughs> why? Why did your guys? No, seriously. Why did your guys' wheatgrass taste so good? Why did I like it so much better than virtually any other wheatgrass I've tasted before in my life? I think it's the low sugar. I think it's a low sugar and high nutrition. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it's and it's grown how a plant is supposed to be grown. It's treated with very much respect. The soil is really um, of high quality. I'm growing soil. Yeah. When I'm growing, I'm growing soil. And so the seed is, you know, it's... That's true, Joni. And we should also tell them that uh, every eight ounce bag of wheatgrass is grown with all the great soil we have here. But in addition to that, one pound of uh, worm castings, uh, which are very expensive too. We're not really interested in the expense. We're interested in our in results. In the quality. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I wish every farm I visited and even the standard agriculture system was like this. They're interested in results and the quality. Most of the farming going on in this day and age, uh, you know, commercial farming, even commercial organic farming, is concerned about the bottom line, about the profit, about making the most money, about producing the highest volume of food. But it's really low quality food. I mean, I know you guys have tasted tomatoes out of the supermarket and how they just taste like crap. And you guys grow your own tomatoes in your yard or hopefully, and you taste how good they are. Well, this is how it is with their wheatgrass. Their wheatgrass is some of the top wheatgrass. And I'm glad I was able to come here and share their whole practices with you and how it literally is a model of how I grow my vegetables and how I want you to grow your vegetables and wheatgrass if you want to. So I know a lot of my viewers out there may not be able to grow their own food. They might live in New York City or wherever they are. But so can people buy your wheatgrass and get that wherever they live in the United States? Yes, we ship uh, all over the uh, U.S. and Hawaii, of course. And uh, what we do is we ship it uh, so it gets to you in two days and it's still cool and fresh. Yeah, we've sent it as far as Michigan. Wow, and yeah. it, once they buy the wheatgrass because of your special packaging that I showed earlier, how long can it last fresh for them? Um, well, w when we cut it, we uh, say that it lasts two weeks because of the cryovac bag. Because the cryovac, but if you, when you get it, you just don't put it in another bag. When you open up the bag, you just slice the edge and keep the bag within the cryovac bag and then take what you want out and then put it back in the refrigerator and because then the bag can keep breathing and the grass can stay healthy because if you put in any other kind of plastic bag the grass won't hold up as well mm -hmm. that's definitely a good tip i mean the one food if i was stranded on a desert island that i would want to eat for the rest of my life are leafy greens because the leafy greens have a lot of protein and as well as nutrition and now yes i would need to get my calories too but literally with eating the greens you could get all the protein that you need i mean think about how do cows get its protein it's from the grass right so you know grass is a very important food whether you you know can order your grass from Al and Joni, or whether you want to grow it in a tray, which is not quite as good, might make you vomit. Um, you know, I want to give this to you guys as options out there because any kind of wheatgrass or sprouts you grow in your home is far better than anything money can buy. And I want to encourage you guys to check my other videos where I teach how to grow sprouts and wheatgrass indoors, even if you're not growing this high quality. Hopefully, you can model some of the practices they do to at least have better quality wheatgrass. Than I've tasted. So, if somebody wants to buy your guys' wheatgrass, how can they get a hold of you? A website, phone number, etc. Yes, we we have a website and it's MauiWheatgrass.com. Our phone number is 808-876-0213. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to come out to your farm today. I mean, it's I've been here pretty much the whole day. I, I thought I'd be here just real quick and stuff, but I've really enjoyed my time and enjoyed. I've really enjoyed the wheatgrass. I still have actually the taste of wheatgrass. And most of the time after I had a shot of wheatgrass, I mean, I had five shots. My mouth tastes nasty. I want to like eat something else. But actually, it's a nice, pleasant, reminds me of like a minty, fresh breath. I wonder how I, how my girlfriend would feel if I kissed her right now. <laughs> but, uh, but I've had a fun time. And, uh, you know, I want to encourage you guys to check them out if you need to get some wheatgrass. Otherwise, start growing it yourself. They got some of the best wheatgrass I've ever tasted. Uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. And uh, we'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting
exciting episode for you. This is super special, exciting episode for you guys because I've been waiting literally for years to do this 